calculator this time. So the last learning target test, it was all about could you use the calculator. This time it's all about can you not use a calculator. All right, so first here we've got a PE teacher recently had her class of freshmen do push-ups and she recorded how many push-ups each student could complete in a minute. Complete the table and make a cumulative frequency graph. All right, here's me in a minute, zero to five push-ups. Two people did that. So how many up to this point? Two people. All right, how many could do uh, less than 10? Well, that would be these two people plus these three people. These are my peeps. Okay, here come the strong people. Five plus 10 is 15. 15 plus 8, etc. Okay, so we're just going to, I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. You should have been able to do this yourself. Just adding the prior frequency with the cumulative frequency. And we end up with 45 because that's the maximum number of people you can have in a PE class is 45. All right, now we want to graph it over here. So notice my number of push-ups is going to go over here. This is my X. And we're going to put the upper boundary. We need to make sure we get all the way up to 50. So let's see, how am I going to break this up? This is 0 because we're starting at 0. 0, 10, 20, 30, whoops, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Unfortunately, I forgot my glasses today, so I might end up making a mess out of this. But here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And if we had room, I would have written down here that this is number of push-ups, but I didn't really give you enough room. And here's my frequency going up this way. It needs to get up to 45. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I've got 15 spaces. 45 divided by 15 gives me 3. So each line is going to be 3. So 3, 6, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to just label every other line. 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. So you want to use a good scale so that you're taking advantage of all the space that you have been given. You don't want to make it like really tiny down here so that we can't read off any values. Okay, so make sure that you are figuring out a scale that's going to work well for the data that you have. Okay, so now we're going to graph these points, so my X and my Y, all the way up to 50 and 45. But don't forget, you need to also put in the starting point. The starting point is the minimum. In this case, the minimum was zero push-ups. And how many people did that? It would be nobody. So, um, so our starting would be zero, zero. That's where we're going to start. All right, so now we've got, this is kind of weird because, uh, anyway, we won't worry about that. Never mind. Um, okay, next point is going to be 5 and 2. So here's 5 and 2. Well, this is 3, so it would be 1, 2, 3. Okay, there we go, 1, 2, 3. And so then I'm going to do 10 and 5. So that's 3, 4, 5. And then I'm going to do 15 and 15, 15 and 15, ooh, that's a nice one. And 20 and 23, 20 and 23. You want to make these as accurate as you can if we were going to answer questions. For this particular problem, we're not actually going to be answering any questions off of here. Um, but do still try and get it as accurate as you can so you can get this level considered correct. Okay, 35 and 38. 40 and 42, 45 and 44, and then 50 and 45. So there it is. And then we want to connect with a smooth as possible line. The idea is that we would be able to read answers off of this. But for level one, I just want you to be able to create it. So you need to be able to add correctly without a calculator and plot points. All right, level two would be actually interpreting a graph. So I could have asked you questions about the graph you just made. Um, so that might happen on the actual quiz. You might actually have to use the graph you just made to answer the questions. Um, or I might give you a graph and you answer questions about that. So here I have a fisherman catches 200 fish. He sells, he measures them, and the results are shown here. Okay, so here's the length of the fish, and here's the cumulative frequency. Estimate the median. So there were 200 fish. So the fish in the middle is going to be between 100 and 101. 
So we can pretty much, we can just go with 100. Okay, so the 100 fish. Now remember, you need to show your work when you're doing this. So I am going to show that I'm going from 100, I'm going over and then down. And it helps to use a straight edge. I don't see where my, hmm, I don't see where my student ID went. That's annoying. Oh, but I got a ruler. Okay. So I'm going over to the graph, and then I'm going to go straight down. I, again, I do not have my glasses on, so that makes this a little bit hard. Looks like it's around a little more than 25 is the median length. Okay, so I take, take the, purse, the fish in the middle, that's the 100th fish, or 101st fish, in between 100 and 101, and then I come over, so it looks like it's about 26 or 27. Okay, so 26 or 27, either one is fine. These, some of these answers are going to be fairly approximate. Okay, estimate the interquartile range. So that was the median. Now I need to find Q1 and Q4. So I divide my 200 fish into quartiles. So divide 200 by 4, and that means every 50th fish is a quartile. So here's going to be my Q1. There's Q2, and here's going to be my Q3. And again, I am going to trace this over to the line and then go straight down. So I'm on here. I can't see what I'm doing because I don't have my glasses on. Looks like that's right on a value. It looks like it's directly on 40. So my Q3 is 40. Make sure you're showing the work on here. Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so now I'm going to find Q1. Take this over to the graph, and then I'm going to go straight down. And it looks like these are pretty nice numbers, pretty easy to take off. That looks like 15. Okay, so really you should get this answer exact, 40 minus 15, you really should get 25. Okay, if you didn't get 25, eh, try reading it again. I'm pretty sure that's pretty darn close. All right, given that 40% of the fish have a length more than K, Find the value of K. Okay, 40% of the fish have a really big length. 40% of fish have a big length. So the big lengths, guys, are up here. Okay, big lengths are up here. 40% of the fish have a length more than K. That means 60% are less than K. So I kind of like looking at this from the other point of view, that 60% are less than K. Okay, so I kind of like going starting from here. Let's take it up to 60%. 60% of the fish are going to be less than some number. So I'm going to actually figure out what's 60% of 200. So again, this is without a calculator. So here comes our arithmetic skills. So 60%, another way of writing that is 6 tenths. That's 60% of is times 200. You can do it like that. Or you could do 0.6 times 200 if you like decimals. Um, I actually like fractions because I can do this. 200 divided by 10 is 20. 6 times 20 is 120. I kind of like that. So the 120th fish is um, going to be my cutoff point. So I'm going to find my 120th fish. Here's my 120th fish. I'm going to take that over to the line and then go straight down and it looks as though my cutoff is 30. So only 40% of the fish are 30 centimeters or larger. So my K is going to be equal to 30, 30 centimeters. Okay, that's level two. So taking the, the graph and answering some questions about it. That question's a little tricky, but these are these are like really straightforward. That one's kind of bordering on a level three question, actually, now that I think about it. I might make that a level three. But my level three question is actually an outlier question. So you should be prepared to answer any levels of these questions you see on here. Okay, the following box and whisker plot shows the number of text messages sent by students in a school on a particular day. And we have um, our minimum is zero, our maximum is 39, and most of them fall within 4 to 11. Find the value of the interquartile range. Okay, so again, that's Q3 minus Q1, so that's a nice easy question. 11 minus 4 
that gives me 7. So the IQR is equal to 7. IQR. The IQR. Um, one student sent K text messages where K is greater than 11. Okay, it's greater than Q3. And it's an outlier. Find the least value of K. So if it's an outlier, we need to calculate where is the boundary for outliers. Okay, um, so in order to do that, we need to remember the formula because it's not in the formula packet. You need to know this. An outlier is 1.5 times the IQR above Q3. If it was on the other end, if it was down here, it would be Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. Okay, but we want above, we want it on this side, so it's 1.5 times IQR plus the Q3. The other side would be Q1 minus this amount. All right, so we have 1.5, our IQR we know is 7, and we're going to add that to Q3, which we know is 11. That will help us get our boundary. Oh, look at this big giant math again. So 1 times 7 is 7, and then half of 7, because 0.5 is half of 7, is 3.5. So 1.5 times 7 is equal to 7 plus half of 7 is 3.5. That's 10.5. So that's how I do multiplying with decimals, easy decimals in my head. I don't like doing the algorithm of multiplying and counting where to put the decimal. I like kind of thinking about it. All right, so this is 10.5 plus 11 gives me 21.5. So my fence is at 21.5. So if we were graphing this, see this is like 10, 21.5. So this would probably be around, around here. This would be where my fence would be. So any number of text messages after that would be an outlier. So if you, um, if you left your answer as k has to be greater than 21.5, if you wrote k has to be greater than 21.5, that's okay, but we're talking about one student sent k text messages. So think about this. Could this student have sent 21.5 text messages? Mm, a text message, even if it just says k, it's a text message. So therefore, the smallest number, the least value of k, would have to be 22. They need to send at least 22 text messages for it to be an outlier. So that's not actually the answer. The answer is how many text messages? If it's an outlier, it has to be at least 22. Okay, because our boundary is at 21.5, but when you're sending a text message, it's either a text message or it's not a text message. You can't send half of a text message. Okay, so the answer should be K equals 22. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, level four. So here we have a problem that kind of throws everything together. So this is a stem and leaf plot, and they show you what these things mean. The number on the left is like your tens, and the number on the right is your ones. So my values here for cans collected by students in Sam's class, somebody collected 20, another person 21, 24, 29, 29, 31, 37, 37, 37, 38, 38. So this is just another way of listing data. So the top number that was collected was 50. The smallest number was 20. Now we want to find the median. Okay, there were 20 students. If we cut that in half, that's 10. So the median is going to be between student number 10 and 11. So here's student 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here's student number 10, got 38. And number 11 also got 38. So the median is halfway in between 38 and 38, which would be 38. So the median is 38. Okay, the following box and whisker plot also displays the same data. Write down the value of A. Well, A is the minimum. The minimum, as we can see up here, is 20. So A is equal to 20. The interquartile range is 14. So I get that by doing Q3 minus Q1. I'm sorry, yeah, minus Q1 has to equal 14. I know Q3 is B and Q1 is 30 equals 14. So to solve this for B, I need to add 30 to both sides and I get B is equal to 44. So that's that. Okay, next part. There are 80 students in the school. Okay, so Sam's class has 20, but there's actually 80 students in the school. 
and the students raised 10 cents for each recycled can. Find the largest amount raised by a student in Sam's class. Okay, this is Sam's class. Who raised the most amount of money? This person right here. So they got 50 cans, but each can is worth 10 cents. So you need to multiply that by 10 cents. So 10 cents times 50 is equal to five. Five dollars, wow, that's really sad. Okay, collected all those cans and all you get is five dollars. That's the most in Sam's class. Okay, next question. The following cumulative frequency curve shows the amount in dollars raised by all the students in the school. Find the percentage of students in the school who raised more than anyone in Sam's class. Okay, the top earner in Sam's class was $5. So notice down here on the x-axis it says amount raised, so $5 is right here. How many students in the school scored above that or raised above that? So we're going to take that up. And then over, oh my gosh, I do not have my glasses on. This is killing me. I think it's there, but it's all kind of a blur to me. I can't really see. I'm thinking it's something like that. So these, I hope that's about right. Okay, so I went up. And then I went over from there. It looks like it's something like that. So um, using what little eyesight I have, it looks like 64 people um, up to this point. Okay, so 64 people score, uh, made less than $5. So how many made more than $5? So that would be the rest of them. So 80 minus 64 would be all the people who made above $5, so that would be 16 people. But I want to know, find the percentage who raised more than Sam. So 16 is what percent of 80? So you could do like the long division and all that, but I'm going to just reduce my fraction. So 8 goes into 16, 2, and it goes into 80, 10, 2 goes into 2 and 10, 1 fifth. And I happen to know 1 fifth is the same as 20%. Okay, so what percent of the students raised more than anyone in Sam's class? That would be 20%. All right, the mean number of cans collected is 39.4. The standard deviation is 18.5. Each student then collects two more cans. Write down the new mean. Okay, if everybody collects two more cans, then the measures of center whoop, are going to go to the right, two. So I'm going to take 39.4, and I'm going to add two to it, and I get 41.4. Okay, write down the new standard deviation. All right, everybody just moved up. Two. So they did not get more spread out. We just moved them to the right. So the standard deviation is going to stay the same. It's still 18.5. Standard deviation does not change when you add to the data. It only changes when you multiply or divide. Okay, that's it. Good luck on your quiz on Friday.